<laughs> would you say your societal the societal topic of of love and trying to move on but move on to reconnect with your old flame and and how they try to bring that into their loneliness to feel that comfort of of what they had that was necessarily good in in certain elements but in the over hierarchy it was you know it was ready to move on but people just can't let go properly right so how this came about was I was thinking about lot, lot well we're thinking about the whole the, it's February right it's Valentine's Day just passed and you were getting phone calls from people from you know 10 years ago talking about I remember you when we was in 12th grade and I always loved you and all that nonsense. So people who <laughs> constantly, constantly looking back or like how sometimes people break up with somebody and then all of a sudden, you know, you go through your phone book because these numbers, you probably should have deleted, but you didn't, you never did because you held on to them and you start going through remembering Robert and David and John and, and you start digging up your old relationships and, and pulling on their heartstrings these people about to get married or start a new relationship and you about to mess their lives up. They can't move on because you didn't move on. And it's all because we just are feeling lonely and, and we want attention. But we can't make room for new things to happen in our lives because we we keep the pictures and we keep the phone numbers and we and we we still keep reaching backwards. And we're like, you know, like Lot's wife sometimes always looking back. So you can't have a future. You can't build new memories. You can't build new um, goals and ideas because you're still looking in the rear view mirror. And the rear view mirror is really small compared to the windshield, right? You can't drive the whole time looking through the rear view. That's why they make the front window big, the rear window small. <laughs> So we have to like focus on the future and we can't get new signals because we're so busy replaying the old signal. I can't watch new movies because I'm busy watching old movies and I'm keep, I'm going to keep replaying Seinfeld over and over. <laughs> I have a huge problem. So I'm not retaining something new. But Terry, what did you have to say about that? Well, I, I, I see it exactly that way is we're holding on we've anchored our energy in the past onto other relationships and we have to bring our release those energies <clears throat> bring them back to us so that we're present so that we aren't being drawn back there because we've left these anchors all along the timeline with those relationships we never really let them go and we we think about oh this was so wonderful but why aren't we in that relationship anymore because there was a whole bunch of other things that weren't wonderful but we still hang on to the one aspect that we thought was just dreamy about it and so we keep going back to that without re realizing that we needed to let go of that as well because there's a whole picture there that that wasn't uh, that 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 wasn't that wasn't best for our evolution what's funny about it is you know i can clearly even for myself look back and say oh the, you you say these people and you're you're trying to cut cords and and get hooks out right but we're blaming the other person for the hook and the cord when we're the one holding the end of the rope like we're the ones holding on to it we're the ones not letting it go and i said oh my goodness no one's doing this to me i'm doing this to myself lisa exactly. What do you think about this with the hooks and cords? Like, how do you deal with that? Well, actually my thoughts on this are a little bit different than your guys's. Like when we fall in love, become attracted to somebody quite often, it's because they're reminding us about things in ourselves that are lovable and likable and attractive. So when we go back to these people and try to reconnect with them, I see it more as just trying to reconnect with those parts of yourself 
that they made you feel accepting about. And so you feel better about yourself. And if you leave a relationship where you're feeling lonely, but you're still feeling good about yourself and being with yourself, the tendency to reach out to others in this way, that you don't do it. So when you, but so you see, you just brought something up. The person feels lonely, but this person reminds them of the good things that they remember about themselves. But this person might be trying to move on and have their new life. And maybe some of the things you that you think you feel good about, maybe they don't feel so good about. Or maybe that part left them heartbroken and unhealed. And so I just have a, a thought about sometimes not digging things up for other people to make myself feel good because I could be hurting them when they're trying to heal or move on because I want to feel good and I want to reconnect to this thing. So I keep reaching out. And to me, I call it like this Southern Bell syndrome that sometimes I, I, I think what I'm thinking of is the more extreme negative side where I'm the Southern Belle and I want all the attention. And it's convenient for me to keep digging out, regardless of how you feel. I wanna keep making myself feel good and I wanna keep getting this intention until now I no longer feel lonely. And what I really want comes and I'm like, okay, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for making me feel good during this time and making myself, you know, giving me a crutch. Now I'm going to go do what I really want because I, I was just hanging out with you or calling you or trying to do something that makes me feel good when I'm not feeling so good about myself right now. And so sometimes I might view it as a hook because I went through a particular situation where I said, oh, this person has this power over me. And I was like, wait a minute, actually, I'm the one that, that did this. I dug this up. And now it's in my face and I'm all woozy, woozy. But it wasn't because that person kept coming to me or that the hook was placed by them. It was, I gave that person permission to do that. You but do. Have, it, it, sorry, it, it is with your own boundaries. And, um, you know, we teach each other how to treat us yes. by the boundaries that we have and my my thing about feeling good about yourself you're not going to be reaching out for these people like I've started a, something called an I am series where we're exploring basically just rebuilding that sense of self and that enjoyment of being by yourself a person can be alone but not lonely and that's because you're enjoying with who you are, not reaching out to other people to give you this, but finding it and building it within yourself. Oh, this is perfect. <laughs> so you could lead us right on into what exactly, who is Lisa? <laughs> what, is, what is Lisa doing and what is the I Am series? Okay, Lisa is um, me. Um, <laughs> I, I am a bunch of things. I am a mom. I am a wife. I am a retired early childhood educator. I uh, am a Jane of many, master of none. I have my certificates in Reiki master. Crystal Reiki, I am a crystal healing certified teacher, uh, color and art therapy. I also practice the Atana method, which is a lot like Reiki, except for using more intention and mantras. Um, what else do I have? Well, I have a whole list of things that I have that I don't implement, but what I am doing these days is something that I'm calling the I Am series. And it is exploring self and the relationship with self. Um, <clears throat> I've I had, I'm I sorry. Love, 
said, I, I'm going to stop you because I said, I love that you say I am a mom because I hear people sometimes say, I'm only a mom or I'm just a mom. Or they put that in front of a lot of the things that they say I am because here it is, I am the most powerful statement in the universe, right? And then they cut it in half or or they, they take the power away from it and say, I am just and only. And the fact that you name your series, the I am series, most powerful two words in the universe, right? I am the great I am, I am that I am. And I just wanted to highlight that. Thank you. <laughs> Not that Thank I've you, completely destroyed your train of thought. I'll let you talk again. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that goes right. I was actually blessed with a mentor who I, I did say that when I was doing early childhood education, I used to say I would I am just. And my supervisor mentor pulled me aside and she said, Lisa, you are not just anything. And I'm like, Whoa. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I totally get that with the self-talk and self-talk is one of the episodes that I do plan on doing in the future um the first episode is just introducing myself introducing what the show is about what the show is about and how it's being presented is totally changing so anyway and I touch on ego and what society says about ego and how it is actually the self the next episode is about wonder and reconnecting with it in, in our life. The next episode is going to be about play and bring more of that into your life. And episodes two at the end, I give you homework. And you don't have to do it, of course, but you're highly encouraged to. Um, first episode's homework was to hug yourself. No, it's it's not hard. Well, no, it can be, depending on where you are and you're, you're healing yourself, right? Um, this next coming week's homework is to do something childlike, something playful. Um, episode after that, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> and then I'll be having a guest coming on already planned who's going to be talking with us about self-empowerment and ideas and techniques that she uses. So yeah, it's all about learning to love the self, learning to accept the self just as you are, um, embracing the good stuff and the stuff that doesn't feel so nice and finding ways to make it feel nicer. You know, I had a conversation yesterday with someone and they were talking about how difficult it is to love themselves and this person was was a young woman and uh you know she had uh, some body issues she had issues from being a teenager oh my god who didn't have issues from being a teenager right but you know she was just you know, saying that it was so hard and that that society has so many expectations about especially like body image and and, and that sort of thing and expectations about what we're supposed to be that instead of looking in the mirror and saying i love you it's like how do you how do you start to say i love you and so that's, you know, and it, it, it's not so much, you know, like we have taken the time to do work and stuff, but somebody who's just starting out on the journey, it's challenging for them to say, I love you when they've been told that there's something wrong. You're not good enough for this. You're not good enough with that. You should be, you know, 20 pounds lighter. You should have uh, blonde hair. You should have red hair or, or whatever. And um, it, it's, I think it's difficult for people who are um, younger. Yeah. It's funny that you guys say that because I, I also had a conversation the other day and it's the common thing, you know, it's the height. 
you know, I wish I was a little bit taller, you know, I'm five, eight. So I, I was right in there as a, as in my, my, my teenage years and trying to play football. So, uh, you know, we had a conversation. I, I percepted, okay, I'm this small, but I'm going to play big, you know, and I did, but my body didn't like it at all. Right. So, you know, playing football, playing free safety and be trying to be the six, four guy, but, um, but, you know, doing a decent job, but it was hard on me in the long run. So basically I, I came around of having that concept that, well, I came in, I was born into this life and, and the divine gave me this, this structural body, this height, the eyes, everything that is foundationally cemented here, you know, and that that's the way I perceive it. So I, I'm I'm blessed and I honor what I have and what whatever I am. I put my for I put my feet forward to empower and have, be healthy as possible, nurse the mind, the body, and the spirit. And with that, it's just riding that wave. And yeah, you're allowed to, you may feel that at times. You're allowed, but we just can't be overwhelmed with it and consumed by it, right? And so that was. It was a it was an interesting engagement in there because they were kind of still kind of balancing with the height issues and um, that percept perspectives on the female parts and of society and stuff. So it was a uh, it was a quite an interesting moment. Mm. You you really nailed it, Jonathan. Because people they they focus on the things that they can't change. Right. And then there's the, the parts of yourself that you don't like, but then you got your assets. Focus on the parts, you know, your talents, your gifts and what you have. Right. Like work, work with what you got. Mm-hmm. And um, and expand on that instead of just focusing on I wish I was five, you know, six foot, but at five, eight. I could be a point guard. I could pretty be a damn good point guard, right? I can't play forward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you go get blocked and get knocked down. Mm-hmm. You know? Or you could be a great kicker, punter, you know, or, you know, whatever. You you focus on those things that you do best. It's that concept of doing what they say that you couldn't be. That was what got me is that. It was like you're five eight. You're only this, so this height. So you should play this way. Yeah. And see, the ego came in, stubborn, and said, "Okay, let's see I what happens." Yeah, I am. So that goes back to Lisa's. I'm yeah. going to focus on what I am and not what I am not. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And people may say, "You know, what do wonder and play have to do with self?" And I am wonder and play reconnects you with what you enjoy, with what you love. Um, it, it helps you relearn to who you are versus what society has conditioned you to think of yourself. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's, is a huge part of what I am trying to spark, facilitate, encourage w- with these videos, with these series. And I guess I may, I better say that I am on YouTube and it is Dragon Zen Art Den. So Dragon Zen is one word, Zen capitalized, Art Den. And my icon right now is this little statue of a dragon doing (laughs) a meditation phase so yeah please welcome to i've only got three videos up right now but you're welcome to check out what i do have uh my set my episode on wonder the recording was awful so i need to redo that and then as soon as i have that recorded i will be posting it to Uh, you're muted, Erica. So you're very, you're very determined person. You started a group called the Lightworkers Union. 
Yes, ma'am. And thank you so much for saying that about me because I really don't feel like a very determined person. Thank you. I mean, we got the days in between, right? And so there are these days in between where we're like, oh my God, you know, well, you know, we're, we're living in a, a very difficult uh, dimension during a very difficult, chaotic times. And it's not impossible, but it is a challenge, right? To keep going. And we talked about this because she was like, you know, you, and I was like, girl, you talking to me today and I feel like quitting today, Lisa. Like, so some days it's like, I feel like quitting today. We were talking on the day where I was like, everything sucks. Cause maybe everybody doesn't see you on the day when everything sucks. And then they see you do one thing and you're like, okay. So you, you're, it's, I don't know if you guys remember the prices, right? And it was like, gentlemen, do I have at least one number right? <laughs> you know, like I, I, I failed, all, you know, all these other things, but I got one number right. And so you look like a superstar because you got one number right. <laughs> and people don't see all those days in between. So no, you are determined because you didn't just quit. You, you got the Light Workers Union. Um, and then you decided to just reach up and do this series, the I Am series. I mean, because I think a lot of times we could just sit and watch other people's channel. But I think it's important that every individual, if you have something to say and if Source puts it on your heart to give a message, a lot of people don't ever open their mouth to share the message. But when you decide like, okay, I'm going to make a whole YouTube channel just so I can make a couple of videos so I can start using my voice and then see what it turns into. Like, yeah, that's a big thing because there's a lot of little steps in between that come with the decision and the work to actually make it happen. So yeah, I'm gonna call you diligent. Thank you so much. I've had a lot of really good support. I have a lot of good friends supporting me, including you, Eric, have helped me along the way and but kept going, girl. And how many times I've heard the exact phrase, people need to hear what you have to say. Right. And you know, I heard it enough times where I actually have, I feel a responsibility for it now too. So, so, so sometimes, sometimes we can be reluctant leaders. Ooh. You know, we, we have to, it's like, okay, if I don't do it, nobody else is going to do it because everybody is holding back. And so sometimes you're, you're, you're being, you're being supported by the energy around you. And it's like, I don't know that I really feel comfortable being that voice, but oh, well, I'm guess I'm, I'm going to do it. So we are reluctant. We, we hold it, but we have the support of the people around us because they're not feeling that. And so the confidence that we really lack, we are um, accumulating it from the people who are supporting us because they don't feel it either, but they have a similar, they're feeling it and they just want somebody to help express it. And so then we end up being the ones and it's like, hey, I don't know how I got to do this, but hey, okay. Because they bar we borrow, sometimes we have to borrow other people's faith. Yep. And sometimes they have to borrow other people's courage. And then here it is where you feel like you're failing because you fall down so many times and you're, you're thinking about all those times in between or before you actually get this thing done, that all your failures all serve to help someone else understand like, guess what? It wasn't easy for me either. And I did it. So that means you can do it. It really is this life of being an example for other people. Exactly. Letting people know like, guess what? I'm not rich. I'm not super smart. I don't have a master's degree. You know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm not a science major of any type, but even I have something profound to offer back to humanity, period. And I really think this is what I'm called to do and what Terry and Jonathan and even Lisa, this is what we're called to do. So we can, we're not, 
what we call what NPCs. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> And as we move further into this being, like we show ourselves to actually be founders, to actually be the people to start the, the movement and to keep the movement going. Because if we continuously rely on others, the voice of others, number one, some people are dropping out of the game and some people are, are maybe falling out with their own ego struggles or whatever. So we cannot just consistently rely on other people to make content. We have to get out here and put our foot down and, and make things happen and be a voice. So if we just keep doing these type of things where we take personal responsibility, if, if, if I take Ascension as my personal responsibility, wow. And then Jonathan takes it as his responsibility. And then Terry's looking at us like, well, I'm about to hold you two accountable. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make sure, let's make sure Erica got the right message. Like, mm -hmm. oh, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, that this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. What is your prime directive? What, what calls directive? of your heart <laughs> to express to everybody, to see and feel your heart, feel you? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of my favorite sayings is when it comes to this is ripples. Mm -hmm. It starts uh, here. Is what? Lisa? Yeah. Ripples. Ripples, like waves oh, on a, yeah. on the water. Yeah. You know, it starts here, you yeah. shine your light, and it ripples out, mm -hmm. touches exactly. everyone, everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we don't know who it's going to touch or when it's going to touch or how it's going to touch because you'll get a message from someone who has seen something or heard something and it's like, what? <laughs> and, they, and they will say to you, oh my gosh, that what you said was so profound. And it's like, really? But it, it doesn't, it's the vibration that we carry. It's the message we carry, not only in the words, but just in our being, right? And, and we don't know who is going to be the receiver that day. Or in that moment. So tell us more about the, um, what, what made you decide to create the Lightworkers Union? <clears throat> Um, good question. I wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had, uh, I quote unquote live on Facebook <laughs> and I had been a part of a lot of different ascension groups, light worker groups, that kind of things. And I left so many of them too, because I didn't like the vibe and I wanted a place where people could come together, people who uh, are creators, like we're, we're all light workers, we're all spark, right? And just to come together to share that spark, to create more spark and ripples in a supportive way. Like it's mostly uh, metaphysical and energy worker type people, but there's everybody in all walks in this group too and that was my that was my intention for it is just to have a supportive environment where people can come together and share their light and even their struggles too and I warn you if I some of my posts I drop the f-bomb I find it's quite clear for your throat chakra to swear expression, <laughs> expression. truth of expression in context I, it is I, good I, or it does clear the room, doesn't it? If you don't, <laughs> yes, 100%. If you don't abuse it, perfect. Love it. Is that on Facebook, Lisa? Yes, it is, Terry. And what's, it, what's it called? Lightworkers, one word, union. Got some and new members coming in. I'm sorry, what? Oh, got yeah. Some new, got some new members coming in. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to have you guys there. Yes, please. And to on Facebook, I'm also a multimedia artist, like uh, painting back here and the canvas here. This is my stuff. I also have Dragon's Zen Art Den 
on Facebook and that's where I have my art and I also have Akashic journey services that I provide where I do a journey with you and then I'll provide you with a little sketch and a story about it too. Mm, that's interesting. <laughs> I'm working with with light and color in the, in the same kind of context that I've been guided with. It's kind of like a kashik, but axiotonal and and in the dragons kind of guide the way to to explore that. But yeah, it's interesting. We're gonna have to talk. <laughs> yeah, we will because Erica said that you were asking about color. Yeah therapy and yes. healing yes. so yeah definitely <laughs> well plus to the relationship with the dragons because terry and jonathan you guys work with the dragons yes together mm -hmm. oh i'm a dragon lady got mm -hmm. my dragon behind me here mm -hmm. i got my other dragon over there oh yeah i've been a dragon lady for a long time i got mine right beside me oh, oh terry is beautiful Oh. She is, and her baby dragon too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is what stone is that, Jonathan? This is um, I I I was it I O. Eucharite is that the Eucharite? Eucharite. Thank you, Terry. Okay. Eucharite. Is that, that what? Is... Yeah, yeah. Eucharite. I thought it oh, was you... Aggie. I thought it was no, mom. That would be you can you canite. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Eucharite. Yeah, yours uh, looks like a moss agate. What color is it? Green? Yeah. Yeah, yours is probably a moss agate. Yeah. Mine's definitely the other one. Um, it glows okay. under UV. Yeah. Oh, it glows. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I thought I saw a pink on yours, Erica, because it was glowing the pink. You must have some UV light happening in your house at the time, too. Well, I got color light. <laughs> Y'all gonna make, I was gonna say, I, I was gonna bust out my son's dragon. Like, wait a minute, I got a dragon. <laughs> I got dragons. Oh, hang on, I'll share one of my my babies with you. Just yes, that. <laughs> please. There we go. This is one of my collection. Oh, oh lovely. Oh, wow. Nice. Oh, my. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. I love my dragons. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. This is, this is good. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> it the is dragons are here. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have to make their grand entrance. <laughs> yep. Do they ever? Oh, then I also have dragon on my, my mallet, too. So, yeah. <laughs> Gonna have the dragons on my mallet. On both sides. <laughs> Thank you for bringing up dragons, Erica. That was great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you're welcome. Oh, also, do drag gone, she gone. So, inspired by the dragons again. <laughs> we'll carry that on with another. another so day. How, long, how long do you plan on um, working on the I Am series? How long is this series that you have? I don't know. <laughs> I have no okay, idea. Okay. So just gonna kind of move along and see where it takes you into the flow right that's Jonathan's favorite word right yeah exactly like the plan is that really there is no plan except for that it's going to stay with the same intention right now it's just me um presenting then there's going to be guests and guest speakers and panels and uh everything from meditations to mantras to hints and tips to techniques so yeah, I really don't know, Erica. Hey, maybe, maybe one day somebody will see me and say, "Hey, she's pretty good. I like that idea. Let's let's pay her to do this." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, always is, is taking it to the next level. So, um, do you have one guest coming up? Is it something where you're gonna um, continue to have guests as? Yeah, I, I already have a couple of people lined up as guests. Um, the only one that's scheduled is for episode four. And her name is Elena, the Greek. And Ooh. she 
<laughs> I love saying her name, it's amazing. And she is going to be talking up with us about empowerment and taking us through some empowerment uh, visualizations, I believe is, is the plan. And to share the services that she provides as a professional to help with these kinds of things too. This happens all the time. <laughs> so Lisa, I'm, I'm so happy that you were able to join us. Um, tell us again, how to find your channel and how often will you be posting? Okay, YouTube channel apparently is Dragon Zen, all one word with a capital Z for Zen, Art Den. I am at Lisa of Dragon Zen Art. I have three videos up right now. I plan to post one episode a week of the I Am series. And I also plan on like, after we're done here, I'm going to be doing some editing and getting up another video, a little short of a prayer. So I'll be putting little shorts up here and there also. Uh, and then you could also find me on Lightworkers Union on Facebook. And I also have my art page and my business page, which is Dragons and Art Den on Facebook. And email is dragonsandartden at gmail.com. I hope you send me all of that in a message so I can post it in the description. So I, every it's so funny because every time I hear you say Lightworkers Union, it makes me think we need to get a lunch box. <laughs> <laughs> like a lunch pail, like you and your dad used to go to work with a thermos and join the union. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna join, we're gonna join the union. I love it. Terry, any any words about the you know, I am? Just, I just, uh, Lisa, uh, thank you. You really opened up some um, lovely channels, ideas uh, to to think about. So thank you very much. You're delightful. Mm -hmm. And Lisa, thank you very much. Yes, and your journey is just just beginning and looking forward to seeing you know how it unfolds and you know having a feeling that there will be multiple connections and and the explorations with with us and maybe we'll have a another chat here and it again so yeah appreciate it very much and thank you i know i'm absolutely loving it because we're, we're starting out talking about how we just reach out and we go outward to try to find satisfaction and try to find um, completeness. And you're gonna do a great job with letting us know how we can go back within to find that internal, our internal reflection instead of always looking outside for answers, solutions, and how to fix ourselves, but with the world around us, with what things we can't control, but if we go within, hanging out with Lisa, I am, it's where it starts. And Lisa, I just, I'm grateful for your friendship and allowing me to post inside the union because I'm a member of the union. I got to get my thermos so we can check in. It's like, we should have like a little punch clock do time, but um, <laughs> I just really enjoy it. And I'm, I'm grateful for the conversations that we get to have. And I'm looking forward to it's watching you expand as well. Thank you. Thank and you. one day you're going to end up coming with me to Egypt. So, oh, oh, that's exciting. I am looking forward to that. Like, I'm looking forward to that on a level where, you know, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> but it's, yeah, never mind. That's, that's me, things that I can probably talk about in one of my episodes. But anyway. Before we go, you just say, I am going to Egypt. I am going to Egypt. That's right. I am going to Egypt. I would like to add before we go, it's one thing I say to my kids a lot. It's like, 
you live with you. You are with you 365 all the time. Make yourself somebody that you like being with. Oh, very good. Very good. Very good. I like that. So we're going to sign out. And thank you for joining us and check out the links below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Somebody needs to hear what was said today. And you're personally responsible now, since you heard the message, to share this message with someone else. So remember to like, share, and subscribe and give us comments. Let us know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and what you want to see more of. I appreciate you. And thank you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.